As teachers, we're creating future citizens of the world, and I feel like it's really important that we equip them with the right tools and knowledge so that they can navigate that world. The work to be done around SOGI uh, isn't optional. Canadian Association of Deans of Education are very interested in the work that we're doing here at UBC. This is now on the national agenda and will certainly be moved along within the discussion of competencies. SOGI efforts are critical to the advancement of inclusion as a core and cross-cutting area of UBC's strategic plan. In thinking about gender and sexuality with students, this is really a matter of rigor. I think it's really important that, as they would do with any subject, teachers engage with the full complexity of gender and sexuality with their students. That word profession, right, it brings with it all sorts of expectations of knowledgeability and expertise, and these caring professions need to be able to care for everyone. I want to welcome you into uh, the greatest profession you could have possibly chosen. So why SOGI? Because we all have a sexual orientation and we all have a gender identity. We need to be mindful of just being inclusive when we're doing our lesson planning and when we're talking, when we're using language with students. And I'll show you that a little bit more about that in the future. There's a lot of teacher candidates and teachers that feel uncomfortable talking about um, SOGI because they feel like they don't know enough and that they are feeling they don't know that basic um, inclusive terminology, but it's our responsibility as teachers to learn that terminology. It's our job. It's our job to make students feel safe and if we aren't including SOGI, we're not making all students feel safe. When we think about preparing educators, uh, we're thinking about that on two levels. We want the teacher candidates themselves to feel included. They want to, uh, as our donor Robert Quartermain often says, live authentically. And they deserve to be able to do that in our program. On the other level, they are going to be educators in school settings and non-school settings as well. And so it's important for them to learn how to create environments that will be inclusive of, of the various forms of identity. When you use a, a young person's chosen name, really, that that has a positive impact on their mental health. Asking ourselves, how can I adjust my language to make my classroom more inclusive is a phenomenal first step. If I never use examples that reflect the lives of the students or their families in my classroom, they're certainly not going to learn what I'm hoping that they will in my classroom, but also it will disempower them. And my goal as an educator is that the students in the classroom feel seen and feel known. It's a really big thing to have a safe space for a student to come and feel like they are welcome because sometimes they won't have the support at home. And so knowing that they have a supportive space to go is a really big help. Yeah, you very well might be the only person in a child's life that, that sees them for who they are. I think professionals really need to understand who they're treating, who they're teaching, who they're with. They need to make their students feel comfortable. The best way to do this is to help them feel understood, included, and valued. The best place to get this type of understanding is when you're in a professional training program and you can talk about all the variations of people that are out there. We decided that it was one thing to support students who were actually in the program, but it was another thing to critically investigate and analyze our own practices as a teacher education faculty. On the one hand, we wanted to map where instances existed within the curriculum. The other thing we were looking at is where are the spaces within the curriculum where this kind of information would fit very well and would in fact improve and enhance the education that we were giving to our teacher candidates. We're incorporating SOGI into our educational courses in a few ways. One, when we cover different developmental topics, we're talking about diversity more. As you're introducing yourselves to your class, I mean, uh, you have the opportunity to, to share about yourselves and, and the pronouns you use and really model that back. It's not the kid's job to educate the students, educate you, educate the teachers about what it's like to be trans. It's their job to be educated. 
And another way is an explicit focus on SOGI education. So in our developmental course, um, we'll have a guest lecturer come in and talk explicitly about SOGI. This allows students to get a better sort of theoretical understanding and understanding of the research related to SOGI. And then it also provides them with an opportunity to talk about their understanding and experiences of SOGI and how they can create safe spaces for their students. I guess I have three or four different intersections of my identity. Um, queer, brown, deaf, and I'm always sort of juggling a lot of them, but they're really all part of me all the time. A very high percentage of deaf people end up very isolated. For me, um, I would say inclusion has been a really big issue in my life. We are seeing single subject um, classes where we talk about gender and sexuality studies in teacher education programs. But we also then see it as being integrated throughout courses, particularly methods courses. If it's in the methods courses, then what teacher candidates see is that it's a part of the general curriculum and then they take that to the schools and what then youth and children see is that, oh, that's, that's a part of how they teach. That's a part of how they think about designing their classrooms. When we think about professional competencies, we're hoping to develop educators that not only develop inclusive language, culture, practices, curricula in their classrooms, we want them to also stand up to homophobia, transphobia, and other forms of discrimination. Indigenous epistemologies uh, allow for more fluidity, greater fluidity around gender identity, sexual orientation, and the roles and expressions uh, associated with those. To move into that place of uncertainty and to teach from a position of, well, I don't know, I'm learning too, can be very scary. This was perceived as one of the main problems that there's a whole a language, a lexicon of specialized terminologies. Overcoming that obstacle was something that people wanted to do. As awareness grows and there's a better understanding of what it is we're talking about when we talk about social inclusion, I think some of those fears start to fall away. We're all in the process of learning. One thing I've noticed is a lot of my professors modeling self-correction when using gender terminology. And it's a really great example of what to do when you misspeak or address a group of people incorrectly. Trans and non-binary people can thrive in workspaces and in educational spaces that support them. That's true for everyone. And so when we're thinking about trans and non-binary educators, it's so important that we foreground their needs in designing the spaces that we live, work, and go to school in uh, so that we can really thrive all together in those spaces. I think SOGI is particularly relevant to physical and health education teachers because uh, there's a strong need for us to widen our perspective on what health really means. Uh, so health is no longer just physical. I think there is um, a large need for us to consider the impact of gender discrimination and sexual identity that could have on mental health and overall student well-being. For physical and health education teachers to deliver and support inclusive sexual health education, they need to be trained in SOGI inclusive practices, they need to be aware of sexual diversity, they need to be understanding of queer youth. Another aspect of what health educators have the power to do, aside from the court, is in the classroom, of what we can educate them about their sexual orientation, about their health and wellness, about their mental health and wellness. There's so many aspects that we can include in the classroom session to make them feel included. And we're also trying to move beyond gender binary thinking that has historically structured physical and health education so that teacher candidates enter school spaces not necessarily thinking about male and female, masculine and feminine, but actually how do individual bodies coming into physical and health education deserve the respect and inclusion in those spaces. It's not just about who are my students today and what are they doing today, but what do they need to know for, the, for their life, that this is core and fundamental knowledge that will be used uh, through the course of their lifetime. I think it's great that the university and the schools are working together to have the SOGI inclusivity because we can learn so much from each other. It's actually theory mixed with real life practice in the classroom. Understanding and awareness about SOGI means that my son can feel comfortable in the classroom and that his friends and the students around him all understand gender diversity and that it's part of the world around them. 
I've been impressed with how Soji's been incorporated here at UBC, talking to other teacher candidates about Soji resources and learning from, from panel discussions and knowing what's appropriate and not appropriate to talk about in the classroom. If our teacher candidates don't understand fears that they have, barriers, stigmas, assumptions that may be created, they can speak up and be open about their, their beliefs and who they are. So I think it's really important that we keep the dialogue open. It's about creating a sense of belonging for our students, which is integral as an educator. I think it's important to just really keep the conversation going and try to really understand what might be any resistance because we all want the same thing. We all want schools and classrooms that are safe and healthy and nourishing and kind. In, in the same way that we would be do, doing our students a disservice by not educating ourselves about all other forms of diversity that are reflected in those young people, um, SOGI is a part of that and it's an important part of that because it does belong to all of us.